make an increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come. We thank you. Master, we thank you, Father, for the manifestation of another Sunday morning. Yes, so that, Lord, that we are able to walk into the sanctuary one more time. Yes, yes, thank Lord, you. to hear your word, Father, firsthand. Yes, so that, Lord, that you may speak to us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, encourage us. Lord, endow us. Lord, lifting us up, Father, and more importantly, Father, just showing how much you love us. Yes, oh God. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank, thank you for this opportunity, Lord, and we won't be sure to give you the praise, Lord, and honor is due unto you. But Lord, you are worthy of all praise, Lord, because you are yet God. Lord, we come now, Father, praying, Master, that, Lord, that you would remove yourself out of the way. Yes, oh God. That, Lord, that I don't speak me, but I speak you. Yes, oh God. And that, Lord, that the words that I speak, Lord, are not my words, but your words. And that with the people here, Father, will not be from my lips, Lord, but from my lips that are spoken over which you have given me to speak. Yes, yes. Lord, I pray now, Father, that you touch the hearts of men, women, boys, and girls. That, Lord, that their hearts will be receptive to receive your word on today. We know the enemy is going to and fro, seeking whom he may be able to devour. And, Lord, even as we speak these words on today, Father, there's some who will try to walk in, Father, and remove it, Father, from our ears and from our hearts. Prior to us, Lord, even allowing it, Father, to soak in. But, Lord, we know you are more powerful than that. And so, Lord, we ask now in the name of Jesus, Father, that, Lord, you take what I speak. Yes, oh God. That he may Father reap, Lord, the benefits that it's supposed to reap. That lives will be changed for the better, Father. Yes, for the better by hearing the word of God. Yes. Lord, I'm grateful. Yes. Lord, I pray now, Lord, that you forgive us for sin. Yes. Lord, I will see the fed sins of omission and commission, yes, Father. Yes, oh Lord, God. I, even Lord, if our minds are not where it's supposed to be right now, Father, I ask Lord that you redirect our thoughts. That Lord, that we understand that, Father, the only thing that matters right now is that we are in the presence of Jesus Christ. Yes, oh God. And that, Lord, that you can speak to us, Lord, and make a difference in our lives. We pray for all of our sick and bereaved, Lord, every mother, Lord, every member, Lord, every deacon, Father, and every uh, person, Pastor, that we know, Lord, that has been on our sick and shed and just we pray now in the name of Jesus, Father, for clarity. We pray, Father, that you would heal their bodies, that you would remind them, Pastor, that you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask for them, according to the power that worketh in us. And Lord, we won't be sure to give you the praise, Lord, and honor that's due unto you. Yes, so mighty name, Father, Lord, and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray to give you thanks. Let every heart say amen. 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 Again. Amen. Uh, I've read it again already, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. I'd just like to use for a topic this morning, what happens when the church grows up? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. What happens? When the church grows up, Sister Carol was a kid, Sister Cammy, I, 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 I and others of my age around that time, I can remember us, amen, expressing this desire and burning uh, desire to be grown. I, I don't know about y'all, amen, but y'all probably have a few little uh, young ones who run around your house, or you at least know of nieces, nephews, grandchildren, what have you. They have this uh, propensity to think that being grown is easy. Uh, as a matter of fact, hey amen. We, 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 Sister Carol, we shoot it off, hey amen. Uh, and I, I can't wait till I get grown. Uh, uh, I, 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 when I'm grown, things are going to be different, hey amen. All of these expressions, Sister Rashida, were expressed perhaps uh, out of some frustrations of not being able to do what we thought we should be able to do at that time. It was real easy for us, Sister uh, Hurst, to shout that out when we thought, hey, amen, somebody was keeping us from doing something. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So we storm out, when I get around, when I ain't never. And, and, and it's amazing, hey, amen, that the nephews turned into yes, she did. Yeah. The nephews turned into yes, she did. Well, right. uh, the nephews turned into uh huh, it did happen, hey, amen. And, and, and so we breathed over that. Crazy enough to shout that out in a manner that would allow whoever we was thinking we was trying to be grown from to hear us. Well, so we kind of shoot it under our mouth, Sister Sherry, just enough, amen, so we could be intense about it and we were saying to ourselves, they're going to get it, amen. But what I didn't understand is that no matter how intense you were shouting that out, you really couldn't hurt the person that you really was trying to get that message across to. That's right. The thing about it is that we have a problem following rules. Mm. Amen. And, and, and so what God is showing us, amen, is that, that, that what we've got to understand is that rules have been in place. We 
was in Sunday school this morning, and as we're in Sunday school this morning, the lesson, the last few lessons over the course of a few weeks, has been all been about God putting rules in place because people needed to know what was expected of them. If we are in a society where there are no rules, we are in a society of chaos. And, and so what happens is that rules and regulations and, and laws and all those things have to be put in place because people have to know that there are boundaries that you cannot cross. Or should I say you should not cross? I tell you what, though, what would I give now if I just had a few more years at home with that? Uh, a few more years to hone my adulting skills, amen. Amen. What, what, what if I had stayed a few more years past what I did? Yeah. How would things be different now? Yeah. Would I have a little bit more money? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Amen. Would I would I been a lot better off? Perhaps, amen. But but but, but what I want us to understand, amen, is, is that, that that we 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 have to be equipped for the world. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and here's what you got to understand: the world. Nothing about you. Oh, uh, you can be grown all day long. I'm talking to the young ones now. You can be grown all day long, amen. The world don't care about you thinking you grow. To deal with the world, you're gonna have to be grown. Uh, and it's for this very reason, amen. And I think Paul is sharing this particular text with us because he's wanting us to understand. And we've been talking about this for the last three weeks now. We talked about us all getting on the same page, part one, part two. Uh, but then also we're talking about this concept now. When the church grows up, what happens when the church grows up? What can happen when it, the church becomes more affected yeah. uh -huh. when it grows up? Why has kept God's children and whispered some of these same words? And it is not spoken uh, uh, from a, 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 a mindset, certainly in our actions. Some of our actions in church say, I'm grown. Huh. However, some of our actions in church also say, I ain't so grown. Hallelujah. Right. Walking in front of God, uh, 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 only to find out that that position is not reserved for the believer. The believer is not positioned to walk in front of God. Uh, we were not protected. Uh, this, this position of leading and walking in front of God was not preordained for us to walk in. And, and, and it's the same concept as you're talking about a parent. The children are not supposed to walk in front of the parent. The safest place, amen, for us as believers is to be in the fellowship of the Lord. Knowing the history of those that Paul is talking to, y'all don't gotta say amen, 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 amen. Knowing the history of those who've been chosen by God and accepted this call, Paul is well aware that these people that he's talking to have come to the conclusion that they have made it on their own. You ever heard somebody say, I done arrived, I done made it, amen. And sometimes in the Christian walk, we think we done made it, amen, because we ain't no longer having to do all the stuff that we used to do to say that I'm a part of being in church. Uh -huh. But what I need you to understand is that your walk with the Lord continues until you close your eyes. Right. So, so, so you are a servant, amen, up until the day that your eyes close. Uh -huh. That's right. Mm. That's right. We, we have not arrived spiritually. And the reason we have not arrived spiritually is because if you're still alive, there's something God is trying to tell you. That's right, that's right. Uh, walk well, with God is a journey. Uh -huh. Sister Carol, it's a journey. Yes, it's a journey. Yes. And it's a journey, amen, that comes along with some lessons. Uh -huh. And those lessons are guarded through experiences, both as individuals and in situations. So what happens, amen, Brother Henry, is that God has allowed you to live 80 plus years so that you would have some experiences with him so that you could tell somebody yourself how good God is. Uh, 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 uh. He allows us, Mother, Mother Bell, to see, amen, those, those golden years in our lives so that we can reflect back and let somebody know that if you can do this and you can trust the Lord, you can make it here too. God is so good. And I, I want you to know that every one of our situations have been different, amen, but God has used those occasions to spiritually transform us into what he desires for us to be so that he can get the best out of us. Take it and say, man, but God still gets something out of me. Having highlighted the need to grow spiritually and to become accessible over in our previous context, God confirmed, or Paul confirmed, he said, I am a prisoner of the Lord. He was telling them that I have made up in my mind that I'm going to give myself to God wholeheartedly. Amen. And, and, and as a prisoner, that makes me a slave. And as a slave, that makes me one who is indebted to the individual who I'm working for, which means that I don't do nothing in and of myself. Now, I only do what I'm told to do. Our problem, amen, is that we can't do nothing now, amen, so we 
people God has for me in unity if I'm not unified with you. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, so, so, so through this, Paul reveals that God provided this gift of grace. And we found out last week that grace is what? Just undeserved favor, unmerited favor. In other words, you don't deserve what you got, but God gave it to you anyway. Uh, somebody ought to be shocked right now. You think about, amen, that he has offered you salvation when you should have been dead. Through, the, through, through you open up your mouth and say, yes, Lord, God has said now what was lined up for you to have. I am now reversing your curse, and I'm allowing you the opportunity now to have eternal life through my son, Jesus Christ. And that's all because of grace. Grace, 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 grace. Uh, and it was God's way of showing us that he was willing to use us despite our initial state. I told y'all last week we was funky. And, and, and in our funkiness, amen, God said, I can see through your stank. I, I see right on through it, amen. And matter of fact, I'm going to cut your stank, amen, with, with some love soap. And, and what happens, amen, is that as I'm cutting your stank with love, amen, the stuff that you used to smell like, you won't smell like that no more. Matter of fact, folks won't see your stench coming. You know you funky. When folks smell you before they see you. And, and what God is trying to let us know is that he saw our state before he even seen us come. But because of the love that he has for us, Big Dick and Terry, he said, I cut through all that with love so that you no longer stink and you have now a sweet-smelling savor under our nostrils. Amen. Who wants to smell good for the Lord? Hallelujah. This is something you can't cut with perfume. Cologne. And now, 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 this is natural smelling good. And, and, and it comes, amen, through God. And, and, and so his grace afforded us this opportunity so that now we can uh, accomplish his will in spite of this gift of grace, along with other grace uh, of gifts, would lay the foundation, lift the walls, and raise the roof, amen, to keep us in step with God's plan. God had an initial plan for it. He told Jeremiah, 29 and left. He said, for I know the thoughts that I have. And you said, the Lord, thoughts of peace and of uh, not of evil to give you an expected end. God has an expected end for each one of us. But in order for us to reach the expected end, we got to stay in the plan. Tell you that, say, never stay in the plan. Stay in the plan. God gives a diverse group of gifts. Gifts that require the execution of each one of them collectively to complete the work. So what happens is that he's got some who, who are praisers. Hello. He got others who are better givers. He got some who are exhorters. He's got some who are musicians and singers. He's got some who preach and teach. He's got some that do various things. He said, but what happens is that all of the gifts actually have to be aligned collectively to do the work effectively. And I've seen good singers, but didn't have a good musician. I've seen good musicians make a good, a bad singer sound better. See, all of it works together. And, and what we've got to learn how to do is stop doing this individualized thing. Because we can't do it by our, I said. It's a collective work. So in Romans, Paul was sharing and he said, having their gifts different according to the grace that's given to us. He said, so God gives us gifts based upon the grace that he just experienced to us. He says, and that is where the prophecy let us prophesy as well, according to the proportion of our faith. In other words, I can't share prophecy if I don't believe in myself. That's right. right. I'm going to tell somebody, I believe God can do something for you, and I don't believe God will do it for me. Right. All right. All right. Mm. Or a ministry that's service, amen, let us wait on our ministry. In other words, he said, if you're going to serve individuals, learn how to first of all be served. Amen. That's right. Yes. Right. See, you got to learn how to do the very thing that you're going to be doing. Yes. Oh, he that teaches don't teach it. He said, we got to wait on these things. This stuff does not come haphazardly. It comes with experience. Yes. Okay. Yes. Amen. So, so I, I learned how to be what I'm supposed to be yes. through time. So I don't learn how to ride the bike overnight. Uh -huh. mm. You know what? There's some stuff that if you learn it correctly, you never forget it. I ain't rode a bike in probably 10 years. But if I get on one right now, it'll be a little wobbly, but I think I can handle it. It's some stuff, amen, that if you've learned it correctly, you never forget it. That's why the word is so powerful. 
If you learn the word correctly, you never forget it. If the word has been implanted in your heart the correct way, you never forget it. That's why the word is so fresh because the word keeps on giving and giving and giving. It's the gift that keeps on giving because something about the word, the moment that you think you know something about God, God will show you something else through the word.
godly biblical instruction is critical to the church's success. Not only the church's success, but our society. Our society falls because folk don't know God. That's right. How do I put in God we trust? But I don't treat everybody equally. That's right. When God is a God for all. Yeah. Mm. Just think about it. Just think about it. Just think about it. It is this instruction that is multifaceted in nature because not everyone needs the same thing at the same time. Right. And I had to learn this, and, and, and people have this. I, I, have, I, I pray and ask the Lord, Lord, help me in terms of how to explain this in a manner that helps folks. But, but sometimes, even in raising our children, we have this propensity to think that we can raise them all the same way. All of our children aren't the same. I don't care, they came out of you, and, and, but they don't all, they don't all have the same thing. And because all of them are not the same, you have to be able to adjust and sometimes readjust your approach, amen, into how you raise them so that you get the best out of them, pulling from them their best, amen, but you have to know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so what God does, this is how good God is. God's so good with this that he knew everybody was not going to listen to a preacher. That's right. Uh -huh. That's right. So he said, now, let, me, let, me you, let, me, let, me show, let me show you where it is. Because because this is a process that God, I'm teaching that, this is a process that God has put in place so that he had total insight to the needs of the people, and so Paul is sharing it. So, so the gifts I'm talking about are not gifts like giving and this. I'm talking about he put individuals in place to reach people. So he's talking about the gifts that these individuals have so that they'll be able to reach folks with the word, to be able to get the word into their heart so that then they can use the actual gifts So he said something like this. He said, and he himself appointed some apostles. That's verse 11. Uh -huh. Some as prophets, yeah. some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers. So we deal with apostles first of all. An apostle are special messengers or representatives of God. So there were 12 apostles that we know Jesus spoke to directly. Uh -huh. Those individuals went on and they taught the rest of the world. One of the apostles fell off Judas. And that apostle was replaced by another Matthias. Uh -huh. So as a result of that, we have those 13 apostles. And then Paul calls himself also an apostle out of season because he actually met Jesus on the road to Damascus. And he had a light that came off. So he made himself. He's not an apostle. And so they come with a special message. And Paul is shared a special message right now. All right, all right. So we have apostles. I'm not going to get in to all the rest of what people are talking about now and now. I'm not going there. I'm talking about what God was talking about, what Paul was talking about right then. So he had 13, 14 that he expressed it. And guess what? Jesus was an apostle. Uh -huh. Special messenger. Jesus. Special representative. Jesus. First apostle. Yeah. Mm. Then he says prophets. Uh -huh. Prophets are individuals who speak a new message from God to the people. Yeah. In other words, people like Isaiah. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, yeah, uh -huh. guess what? Paul, uh -huh. come on. So you have individuals who are sharing these special messages, a new message, telling them, not only do I say this, but then Paul would say something like this, not that God said it, but I said it. Yeah. In other words, as inspired by the Holy Spirit, I'm sharing with you what this interpretation of this is. So I'm telling you that some stuff that Jeremiah yeah. on the Isle of Patmos represents a prophet because he said, I saw it. We have evangelists. Uh -huh. That's those individuals who spread the good news of salvation. That means all the apostles and everybody else who was teaching the word of God. Matter of fact, you are the evangelists. All right. Come on, What? You mean I ain't got evangelists in front of my name? No, right. See, you ain't gotta have the title to do all the work. Right. All right. Our problem is that we got the title, don't do the work, but we want the credit for being yeah, on. Yeah. Yeah. You just do what you're supposed to do, and then you ain't got to worry about the title, amen, because the title, your actions will tell what your title is. Amen. Uh, <laughs> so they spread the good news of salvation. They go out telling folks, amen, who Jesus and who God is and what they need to do, what the expectation of. So in, uh, in Acts chapter 8, uh, 9, we have one who he meets at the Ethiopian. He said, what precludes you from baptizing me now? He said, that was a woman. He said, you have shared the word, and I received it, so baptized. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Mm. Then we got pastors. Now, pastors are sharing.
shepherds. Yeah. And they also guide people, God's people. So, so, so I, I, I'm not claiming to be an apostle. I'm not claiming to be a prophet. I am a pastor and I'm an evangelist. Yeah, yeah. So, see, we, we got to be careful because sometimes we want to have all five of them. Yeah, yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with having one. The thing is that you operate well in the one that you... <laughs> For the works of service, it's 12. 
to build up the body of Christ until we all reach oneness in the faith and in the knowledge of God, uh, the Son of God, to become a mature believer, reaching to the measure of the fullness of Christ. Right. See, that's what he's saying. God did this so that his people, those who respond to his God, because everybody ain't his. Let me keep this in mind. Everybody ain't his. Amen. Everybody who comes to church ain't his. Right. You got to make up in your mind who I'm going to serve, why I'm not serving, and how much effort you're going to put into doing it. He said, I'm doing this with what? because I want y'all fully equipped to complete to do the works of service. He said, there's too much work that needs to be done that one individual can get it accomplished. Amen. So I put all these individuals. So, so what we have is an obligation to serve and to encourage one another in an ongoing effort to reach our full potential spiritually. Right. Ah, some of us are mature in fussing. <laughs> we mature in lying. We mature in making up whatever we want to make up to make it feel like it's for us. Yes, yes. He said, but well, I need y'all, I don't need y'all mature in that. Y'all right. already been mature in that. That's why sin had to get rid of it. I had to get into that. That's mature stuff. He said, I need y'all to be mature spiritually. Yeah, amen. Why? He said, because there's some stuff that's coming that if I ain't got mature people who are teaching other folks how to be mature, we're going to lose this thing. Yeah, right. Now, he said, well, I want you to understand, it ain't going to be totally lost. I'm just going to have to drop a few people off who I wanted to be a part of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Say, man, don't get dropped off. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, we have an obligation to serve. Amen. We got to serve. One and this potential, according to Paul, is the region of oneness in faith. Amen. What is he saying? He said, he said, he said, Sister Karen, all of us have to have the same measure of faith in order for stuff to get accomplished. We all got to believe that we can pay off a building. Yeah. 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 We all got to believe that God will make a way out of no way. Yeah. We all have to believe that God can heal a person that we all been praying for from an infirmity. We have to all believe that. Why? He said, because if we operate in unity and we don't have nobody doubting, then that's what does is it manifests yeah. stuff into yeah. a man uh, existence. You ever thought something long enough and it happened? Yeah. Your thoughts got to be right. right. And so when he's talking about this faith, amen, he's talking about this, this total reliance upon him, even when we can't see what's going on. All right. Man, that's some stuff that I would have asked God, and I was like, God, I'm just not to trust you on me because I don't see it happening yet. Yeah. That was 10 years ago. Yeah. 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 Anybody still waiting? On something that was promised, tell you that and say, wait. 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 Just keep waiting. Wait. Just keep waiting. Because well, see, see, sometimes what happens is that the wait is part of the process. That's right. He's actually setting us up to see if you're going to actually stay on board. And if I can stay on board, amen, even in the, pre in the pro process of the wait, God knows that I've made a commitment to him and not the thing that he promised us. That's right. Because what happens is after he's given you the thing that he promised you, now he said, I'm getting ready to promise you something else. That's done with Kind of like on Christmas, you go in and you get your gifts and, and, and you open them up and, and you get the one toy that you really wanted and then you get a bunch of other toys. But the toy that you open up first is the one that you really didn't want. <laughs> so you play with it for a little bit and then you go and get the other one, hoping that it's the one that you want. So you play with it for a little bit and then you finally get to the one that you really wanted and, and, and you open it up and you had already wanted it so bad but you didn't play with the other stuff. Yeah. That the thing that you really want is not really what you really need. Right. So you end up now going back to the very thing that you thought you didn't want, right. and that's the thing that you hold on to. Y'all yeah. gonna get that later. Right. You get it later. You gonna get it later. Let, let, let me have some of my singles. Sometimes the very thing that you thought you wanted in somebody is not what you really wanted. And when you got it, you feel like you've realized that that wasn't really what I needed. That's right. And then God comes back and shows you that what you really needed is you already had. And then we go back to what you really had. And now you see the importance of having it over what you thought you should have had. And now you're more happy. Y'all yeah. gonna get that later. <laughs> Amen. So, 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 so what happens is that, that, that when we walk by faith and we know who Jesus Christ is fully, the coming together should follow in a manner that allows for real change to take place. When all of us get in line together, real change happens. Yeah. So if there's something that you 
have not seen change already, it's because perhaps the people who were supposed to be in alignment with you are not in alignment because they don't have the same faith that you have over that same time. Alright. Mm. Ah. It allows real change. And, and, and what happens is that our purpose is to help the lives of those who are lost, hurt, unassuming, disenfranchised. Amen. Just treated bad. It's a point in which we represent God totally and the benefit of this sin, sin world. See, when I, when, I, when, I, when I do what I do, I'm doing it, or we should be doing it, with the intent that we're trying to show the world that they no longer have to be worried about the stuff that they worry about. I've asked this question before, but I, I, I know this is honest. How, how many worriers do I have? Don't really y'all need to raise your hand today. I'm not gonna raise your hand. How, how many worry about stuff that you can't change? How many, how, how many get bent out of shape over situations that take place? That you really have no control over. And you really gotta just put it in the hands of the Lord. Let me let me have you like this. How, 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 how many can tell other folks? How they ought to handle a situation, but when it comes your time for the situation, you don't have to decide that. Right. Maybe that's a better way. You can tell Bill, you need to trust the Lord. God will do it. He'll handle it. He can take care of that. He got this thing taken care of. All you got to do is just put your faith in him. Don't worry. But then when it comes to you, you all over the place. Let me help. Let me help. I'm trying to help. I'm trying to help. Amen. Because what happens is what's good for the goose. It's good for the gamma. What we've got to understand is that God sometimes allows situations in our lives that express work. He said, you can tell everybody else how to do it. But now I want to see if you really can put into practice the very thing that you also say you believe. Yeah. All right, all right. Mm. We got to be mindful that there's various attacks that come our way, y'all. That's what verses 13, 14 says, so that we are no, the reason he wants us to mature, Sister Carol, is that we are no longer children. Tossed back and forth and carried away by every wind of doctrine, by the cunning and trickery of men, by the deceitful scheming of people ready to do anything. Now, when we come, I don't want to explain this because we, we have to be mindful of these various attacks. There are shifts in doctrine that take place right now. There's shifts in doctrine. You got to pay attention. It's folks, it, it, it's folks, it's folks making uh, 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 bold declarations on the actual TV that they don't believe in God. Which means that if they are making that a bold declaration on television, then that means I have influence. And that means that everybody who hears that, hears that, and now anybody who was doubting now has some power behind that to continue in that doubt. So, so if I can put on there about what I don't believe, why can't I put on what I believe? Why come my belief in him in prime time can't be shown like it's shown that nobody believes it? Because it contradicts what the belief of the culture is. Uh, all right, all right. So we got to be mindful that there's, there's doctrine shifts, amen? Uh, there's folks talking about now that the, the, the Dead Sea Scrolls wasn't what they were, and this and this. It's a bunch of stuff that's going on, and if you're not careful, you'll start trying to figure out if it's true. All right. But if I believe and have faith, I just trust the word. Lean and not into my... I don't understand. Not only that, amen, but you got a bunch of slick and swift talking individuals. They got some deceitful tactics, amen. They're trying to separate people from their they stuff. Y'all be careful. Folks sending out emails telling I send a hundred thousand dollars here and you're gonna get two hundred thousand. It's a lie. It ain't nothing free. You don't get stuff like that. Find your bank account empty. <laughs> and then the very people you don't want to fool with, you're going to be calling in to ask you to help you get your money back. You got to, they, they, they out there, they out there, they slip. They trying to separate you from your stuff. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Don't, don't fall for no reverse mortgages. I'm teaching. Be careful. I don't care who is credible when they get an advertisement. Because they ain't lost any of their stuff. I always remember that the endorser is usually being endorsed. Which means that the stuff that they endorse and they ain't got to worry about because they already got their stuff secure. 
You get somebody in your house, you be sleeping in your truck. I'm just telling you, be careful. And this is very important for our seniors. It's very important. Because there's all kinds of schemes going They're supposed to go in and taking people's mortgages and like, taking their they deeds and everything else. Be careful. That's Secure right. your stuff. That's right. That's right. Be careful of the number of individuals you let handle your business. That's right. That's right. Understand their intentions before they fool with you, before you fool with them. I'm serious. I, I'm very serious because the very folk you think you can trust are the people you can't trust. So, so it's very important, amen, that I use God and wisdom in everything that I do. First and foremost, I don't make a move without asking God. That's right. Don't take a promotion, don't take a card paper, don't take a nothing without saying, Lord, what do you say about it? Because they'll get you in whatever you want to get in. They'll put you in a $500 dollar house with a $200 dollar car, and they don't care if you only make it 50 cents. Right. They'll come back and take all your stuff and then mess your credit up talking about you didn't pay your stuff. They don't care because they done made the loan, the people who have made the loan, they made the money off the loan, and all that stuff is gone, and you sit there crying. The enemy is crafty and it makes this stuff look good. Watch them pay that loan. They have compounded a fruit of interest. You'll find yourself paying back $300,000 I'm trying to exaggerate it because I want y'all to understand there's folks out there that's trying to mess folks over. And we as believers have to trust and believe that God is trying to show us how to get through this life in a manner that's consistent with what his will is so that we don't get taken. That's why he got teachers. That's why he got pastors. That's why he got apostles. That's why he got prophets. That's why he got all evangelists. That's why he's got all these individuals with gifts. Why? Because all of our gifts collectively should still help folks stay away from stuff that can hurt them. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it takes a commitment to be diligent in all things that we're going to reap the rewards that are associated with doing so. The exercise of faith without fact. You got to exercise faith even when you don't know the facts. That's why Hebrews 11 6 says, without faith, it is impossible. It's impossible to please him, for he that comes to God must believe that he is first God, and that he is what? A rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Put your boots on, put on your overalls, and diligently look for the Lord. You gotta uncover rocks and dig through caves and do that. You got to seek him. But you gotta seek him where he may be found. Why do you may be found? Because there's gonna come a day when he ain't. He ain't gonna be there. So don't, 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 don't take for granted that you're going to have forever to get this thing right. Over 2,000 years ago, our example of hope came. Yeah. Who was our example of hope? Our example of hope was Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and, and he came, and, 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 and Jesus is the only begotten son of Jesus, of uh, God. So he's the only God. He's the only one God birthed himself uh, uh, through the actual birthing process. Uh, Jesus, a uh, mother of human. Amen. So he's human, and he's also a divine. His father was I seeded him into his mother and gave him to the point that he conceived and as a result of that Jesus was birth. Yeah, right. He was gifted to the world. Yeah. Think about that. God said, I love y'all so much, I'm going to give you my son. And he was given, amen, as a result of God's intense love for the world. For God so loved the world oh, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes him shall not perish but have what? Everlasting life. Ah, the sin of mankind was and continues to separate us from God. When we sin, we separate ourselves. Yeah. And, and it falls short of God's expectation for us. That's why Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned yeah. and fallen short of the glory of God. And although we deserve death, there's no sin. Tell you that, say, I deserve it. I deserve it, but thank God he didn't give it to me. Yeah. Woo, hallelujah. God provided the gift to address it in a manner that pleases him. So Romans 6.23 says, But the gift of God is eternal. Eternal yeah, life in Jesus Christ, our love, our Lord. And so it was to secure eternal life for the believer. Jesus would be accused, he would be tried, and then ultimately he would be sentenced to death. And there from the cross, amen, they come and they're, 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 they're persecuted and they're talking about him and 
talking about? We got a little boy up at the desk. Yeah. <laughs> you wasn't supposed to do that. Let me go find him myself. I was already told when I walked in the store, do not walk away from you. And so, so, so Jesus is realizing for a moment he's going to be separated. But he goes and he gives up the ghost. The Bible declares that he drops his head in the rock over his shoulders and he dies and they take him down, y'all. They bury him in a borrowed tomb. He says that all day Friday. Yeah. All day Saturday, but early Sunday morning. Yeah. Sister Vicky, he, he gets up. All night. And, and, and he moves way before everything else moves. Yeah, yeah. So by the time the disciples get there, the angels are telling him, he's gone. He ain't here. Who you looking for is gone. But what we understand is that Jesus has now risen as he said. He said, if I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. All right. So my father gets up, Jesus, he gets up, and when he gets up, he gets up with all power. He ascends into heaven, and then he's sitting out on the right hand of the father. He sits in a power seat, y'all. One of position and authority. He sits there, and as he's sitting on the right hand of the father, he's pleading on our behalf. We have an advocate in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yeah, advocate, one who has went through the same things that we went through so he knows what it's like, so he can explain what we are dealing with in a manner that we understand, that, uh, that God understands, yes, they are not as mature as they need to be. But God, give them another chance to get this right and through their lessons, they'll learn how to be what they need to so that when the church grow up, people will change. Ah, uh, it was from here, amen, that we know Jesus will ultimately end up coming back. Uh -huh. Verse 15 says, we're speaking the truth in love. Yeah. Uh, let us grow up in all things unto him, who is the head of Christ. From him the whole body, joined and knitted firmly together by what every joint supply, when each part is working properly, causes the body to grow and mature, building itself up in love. Our obedience in word and action are evidence of our love for God. So when I'm obedient, when I'm obedient, when I when I when I do what I'm told to do and I do it, then, then I show God I love Him. And what it does is it identifies His truth and it identifies us as individuals who are spiritually mature in our walk and we understand what it is that God needs from us so that we can serve as active participants in the kingdom. Now, the kingdom is not only here on earth, because the, the kingdom also is heaven. It, the kingdom, the ultimate kingdom is heaven, but we have some things here that we have to do here on earth, amen, that signify that we are ready for the kingdom. Yeah. Right. We follow because he has been the perfect model of what is needed to stand in unity. He stood with the Father. Holy Spirit stands with him. None of the three outstep one or the other, and they all operate in unity. Right. Not only that, he is the head. And we represent the rest of the body. So if Jesus is the head, then what happens is that the head has to be right. And if the head is right, then the rest of the body has an opportunity to follow right. If the head ain't right, guess what? Think about it this way. If my head tells me to go get something out of the fridge right I ain't supposed to get, then guess what? My body will usually follow. Yeah. He said, but the head got to be right. So Jesus being the head, he's right. And if he's right, the rest of us can be right. And if the head is right, amen, then we ought to all fall in line and we should function correctly. Yeah. That's what he's talking about. Each part is working properly. For this to happen, there's no room for temper tantrum. Church, we got to get away from that. It don't go your way. It don't matter about your way. What the Lord say. We got to get away from spoiled church folk. I always have had to get away and I was going to happen this up. We got to get away from that because that keeps us from doing the mission. We got to get away from love imposters. Folk who say they love you in the church, but then they talk about you all the way back home. No, 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 no. We, 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 we got to get this thing right, y'all. I'm, I'm telling you. I, 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 I'm trying to help you. So that when you leave here on uh, 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 January 30, 2022, you can say, I was told what I need to do to make sure that I demonstrate spiritual maturity. Because what's happening is if I don't, God going to keep on messing with me until he get me where I need to be. Amen. Amen. Church, it's time for us to grow up. 
We got to be accounted for. It's too much killing, too much foolishness, too many people who are not being represented. There are too many folks who who walking away from church. Mm. How do you walk away from your foundation? I want y'all to think about that. Because you play a role in that now. You tell people how to be in church. It's time to go back and talk to them. Say, you know what? I know this. You haven't been giving God as much time as you used to. They're going to get mad. Yeah. I'm just telling you, they are. But you have to say that because God has put that in your heart. He's charged us with being the strong when the weak are going through what they're going through. Right. So you tell them, hey, you know, I know she ain't been here for a while. And it's not an indictment on you. I just, you know, just want to make sure that you're doing okay and, and encourage you that you cannot walk away from the Lord. Because walking away from him is the worst thing you'll ever be able to do. Just tell you that straight out. Yeah. Amen. You ain't got to be confrontational. Because I'm telling you, they're going to say, well, why are you talking about it? I know it's coming. <laughs> you just say what you're supposed to say and then move. Yeah. Our problem is that we want to have a conversation after we have told people what they need to know. Uh -huh. Walk right. away. That's right. And be done with it. Uh -huh. You all have a very special gift that God has given you. And he shares with us, here's what we do as we close out. First Corinthians 13, for we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part should be done away with. Jesus came. So the other stuff is done away with. We just not waiting. But what you do is you make sure you serve him while you wait. But then Paul says, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. He said, when I grew up, Plato was all I knew. But Plato don't do, don't pay bills no more. I knew how to build the best with some Lincoln blocks and other blocks, but they don't pay the bills. I gotta go to work. And he said, he said, when I was a child, I did childish things. I thought as a child, I understood as a child. Mm -hmm. Said, so, but when I became a man, now that's the call saying you became a man, but now let's put it there, when you become a woman, well, when we become grown, yeah. we put away childish things. Yeah. Right. We extend an invitation today. Amen. There may be somebody who has operated in a childish manner, thrown tantrums, done this, done that, and the Lord has spoken to you on today and said, I need you to change you wait. When the church grow up, the world will grow up. Yes, sir. But if the church, the church is still acting in this We still fight for the very things that are trying to protect people. We still want rights when we ain't got nothing. Then we're gonna never be what we need to be. It's extremely important that we walk with our heads lifted up to the hills. Which come in our help, because all our help coming from the Lord. God is not mocked. He wants you to be saved. But He's not going to make you be saved. So I encourage you today. If you've slipped away just a little bit, slid back just a little bit, maybe have not really thought about the importance of the word and fellowship.
Offer this as the benediction for our online service.